Hi everybody and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Yet another episode where I am driving instead of talking on the phone. Um, I'm going to record because why not? Um, Honestly, I, in case I haven't mentioned this enough, never prepare for these podcast episodes. Hopefully that is not um, discernible to the uh, average listener that I have zero notes and zero preparation. So it's not the sort of thing where I'm fumbling over over my notes because I have no notes. So that is kids the benefit of not preparing. Um, But anyway, so I had this great realization and this analogy this morning that popped into my head that I wanted to discuss about porn and uh, women's love languages, which usually are not physical touch. And the ones of us who are physical touch, we like a lot of cuddling and all sorts of stuff. Guys, usually physical touch means cuddling, but you know, fucking. Like that's like, they they have a fucking love language. So, um, you know, (laughs) I mean, that's just the truth. Like, so um, maybe guys... I should just start using that one, but it would be even less appealing to their wives, obviously. But um, anyway, most women have like a, a romantic words of affirmation. Many women do, not all. And I wanted to make an analogy between those that will hopefully help men to understand what it's like when they want more of a porny sex experience and uh, what that would be like for uh, the the equivalent if their wife requested it for them. Uh, But before I do that, I must always encourage you to subscribe. My most recent subscriber-only episode was about uh, male biology over the lifespan, and that is very helpful to anybody who... Um, has a male in their life or is a male. So that's like everybody who listens to me has either a male in their life, is a male, or I mean, if you're just like a woman dating a woman who's listening to my website, then skip it. I mean, you know, so like y'all could decide for yourselves what's relevant. But um, I think that it's uh, pretty interesting. Plus, you should subscribe anyway, because I have like 1 million other ones or 61, whichever one is uh, going to make you subscribe. <laughs> So anyway, in terms of what I was thinking about, sometimes men don't understand. They start having sex with their wives and their wife just wants to stay in like one position or do one thing. And the guy is like, what the fuck? Like, this is not like porn at all. They don't articulate that because they would think that would be immature. Um, but their their subconscious makes a comparison. And they're like, uh, why is my wife like the only one that doesn't want to do, you know, the urinating flamingo or whatever the fuck position they found online and um, switch from that one to the other one and to this one to that one. So let's picture that you are out with your wife at a nice restaurant and you know she wants to talk because she always fucking wants to talk right and so you you really been listening to my podcast so you got it going on and you're so proud of yourself you're like let me tell you what I love about you you are so sweet with the kids and you're such a good mother I could always count on you with the children and never have to worry about anything and she says okay okay now tell me about how hot I am and you're like, oh, this is weird. Okay, yeah, you're really hot. Like, I'm really into your body. You're, you're so pretty. Um, I always am so attracted to you. And then she's like, okay, okay, okay. Now tell me about my intelligence. You're like, fuck is this shit show? And you're like, uh, okay, well, uh, you're uh, really smart too. I always tell you that. Apparently not enough. And she's like, oh, okay, do more of that and then tell me how funny I am. Now listen, you would be like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Does she not, like, even appreciate? Does she not even give a shit? Does she not even, like, I was kind of enjoying telling her how in love with her I was at the beginning, what a good mom she is. I was told to say that one literally by the podcast. Why is nothing ever enough? What is all this quick change bullshit? We can't even get into one topic. It seems really fake to me. Seems like she's just using this as some sort of, uh, I don't even know what, a list of ego boosts. I don't even know what she's doing. She, like, records me or something like for later I mean what you doing that's how it feels to a woman when you're doing all of these positional changes and all of this okay why don't we you know wear a blindfold tonight okay tomorrow why don't you be sexy nurse okay next week why don't we do like a 69 it's like calm the fuck down like can't we even enjoy one thing ever Now, this doesn't mean to say that if y'all are like every so often, every six months, if she was to do this, you wouldn't be like, okay, it gets this like emotional orgasm time. But if this was what every encounter turned 
into, you're not going to want to talk at all. You're going to feel like some sort of like used, like fake sort of uh, thing, you know? It's, it's not going to be resonant with you as a genuinely romantic, reciprocal experience. And I think this is a very good way to understand um, how women feel when men are always saying flip over. No, now do this. No, now do that. No, now do this. And I think that this has gotten even more ubiquitous in recent years because of porn. What does the guy do when he's looking at porn? He flips from this to this to this to this. It's like a video montage, you know, and and, and then he gets, um, you know, the three women are together and then it's one woman with oral sex and then it's two women and a man and da, 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 da. and it's like the brain gets used to that quick change. It's like, have you gone dancing in this, you know, recently versus like, you know, five, ten years ago, the music changes very quickly now. I think it's because of the screens. I think it's literally because of the phones and people flip from one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing. So the DJ does that now. Well, my husband and I were out, you know, I forget last year, we didn't even hear a full song one time. <laughs> It just flips and flips and flips and flips. And it was didn't used to be like that. Sure, the song would fade into the other song, but it didn't go after like a minute. You know, it went after the whole song. And I think that this culture and porn is, is definitely this. goes from um, one image to flip to the next, flip to the next video image, flip to the next, flip to the next. And uh, guys really um, get used to this and then they want to replicate it. So it isn't just exploring that the woman doesn't want to do. It's this quick change thing. And and of course, a woman can't have an orgasm when she's flipping from position to position or from, you know, uh, one sort of thing to the next. So, as always, what I feel is that women are misunderstood as not having their full sexual potential because of the circumstances that they find themselves in. And this is not guys' fault. Guys and women operate so differently. To men, it is, the way you've got to think about it is like the mental piece. Every See, here's another thing where I feel like uh, media does us wrong. So you always hear that for women, the mental component is very big. That is completely true, but there's there they, really it's very different than how the mental component works for men because men think okay mental component is very big for me too. So like for example, if it like my my analogy always, if you're a straight guy, you know, getting a blowjob from a man is not going to be as good or even really something that you want at all. But I mean, it could be a good blowjob, but you don't care because in the mental component, you're attracted to women. So just closing your eyes during a blowjob by a dude is not going to do it for most heterosexual men. Um, there are some who would be fine, but not the average Joe. And um, it, it, it's, the, it's the same thing. So for men, um, there is a big mental piece as well. And a lot of their mental piece comes from two things. It comes from thinking that the woman is excited and novelty. So yes, the penis is going into the same vagina. It doesn't feel much different. But seeing the woman in different positions, seeing her body, hearing her talk, any of these other stimuli, are obviously mental. They're not just physical. Again, the penis is being stimulated in much the same way, but there is a lot of mental components. So then men think that they understand women. They're like, shit, I'm mental too. But what we mean by mental with women is very different. What it means is that she has to have some sort of fantasy life going on usually that is the context upon which the physical sensations have to happen. But for a man, let's say he could be having, quote, boring missionary style sex that if it was so boring and she just laid there like a dead thing it could take him 20 minutes to finish or he couldn't finish at all in terms of intercourse whereas could be the same exact position but if the woman was saying a lot of exciting stimulating things he would come in 30 seconds right so that is not how women work <laughs> that's not how women work very very few women um, can have something that is not very physically stimulating change into something that is physically stimulating by the uh, mental context. That That is hard. So if you are going down on your wife poorly, she, she could have a real active fantasy life going. A, a, a woman who's good at having an orgasm may still be able to eke one out, but you being technically proficient will make her have the, you know, five minute or 10 minute length of time orgasm not that the orgasm goes on for long, I mean until the orgasm happens, five or 10 minutes or even 10 or 15 minutes versus if you're bad at it, you could go on for 30 minutes. You could be, you know, uh, 
she, she could be doing virtual reality that you're Ryan Gosling and it still isn't going to matter if you're really shit at going down on her. So women are much more responsive to the physical, technical stimulation in order to have an orgasm. Men can be, you know, a fucking uh, cantaloupe and if there's some hot woman in front of him doing a striptease, he, he can come very quickly. A woman is not the same sort of thing. So for women, the mental peace comes when they have this active fantasy life that's going on to make them even more orgasmic. But technical skill is necessary but not sufficient. For men, if they're getting some sort of expert blowjob, like, you know, it, it, it's that's great, you know, but let's say it was an expert blowjob by like a woman who they knew wasn't really into it versus um, a not so great blowjob, but oh, the woman was so hot. She's like a supermodel that's dying to be with them. There's going to be a lot more, honestly, um, responsivity to the uh, woman who is so hot dying to be with them in most cases. Although not all. There's men that don't really like... um, intimacy, honestly. So they would prefer to get an expert blowjob by a hooker, you know? Um, but, but either way, these are things on the margins. The point being that men and women, they, uh, are very different. If this podcast doesn't make, you know, this this entire podcast, not just this episode doesn't make that clear by now, then you've not been listening. So sexually men and women are very different for a woman. The idea of novelty, it's, it's okay, but it's not good if it detracts from her physical experience. So the physical experience takes a while to mount. Women are very particular in their physical needs, more so than the average man. They have less testosterone. They have more of a hump to get over, no pun intended, before they get to feeling orgasmic than the average guy. Now, there are ways to get to do all of your positions, but you can't forget that the woman is a is a person with specific needs and her need is to fucking enjoy herself the same as your need is. So therefore, what might you do so that you could do all of your positions is you can make sure that the woman enjoys herself first and then you can do all of your positions afterwards. <laughs> so that's one sort of thing that people try is that you do whatever you do that reliably gets the woman off and then before you come you do all your different positions some guys are so turned on by going down on the woman or getting the woman off that they can then no longer do their positions so listen well what are you complaining about you're already so excited this is a good thing this is a good thing to be very excited by your partner so what you cannot do is say well here's the thing making my wife excited gets me too excited So I want to have the experience that I see in porn and I want to do eight positions and I want to be, you know, pumping into her for 20, 30 minutes straight at least because that is what I think a real man does or that's what sounds fun. And so what we're going to do though, she can't be too excited at the beginning because, you know, she can't be actually excited because then I get too excited. And so what we have to do is we have to have no foreplay. And so what we're going to do is instead we're going to do eight positions from the beginning and, um, Um, And and that's how we're going to roll so that I can get my full experience. If she does this with you, you might as well be doing it with a real doll, honestly. Like, if if she's not into it, she's not going to be into it. And you can work on using the start-stop method for premature ejaculation, which you can Google. I mean, it's what it sounds like. You can train yourself to be, you know, longer lasting. Or if you can't, then you could just say, oh, hey, look, I live in a good world where I'm so excited by my wife that I come after she comes. And this kind of works for her works for us. What I don't get to do is be like Superman and do some fake thing where a guy in porn can last forever, you know, and uh, the woman has orgasms just from anything he decides to do. He decides to screw her in any position. She's having an orgasm because guess what? They're not real. Uh, sorry. Um, so the, the point here is there's no free lunch, a constant theme of my podcast. And so the idea that you want to flip your wife into all these different positions, but also have her be excited, but not too excited because if she was actually excited and this happens so frequently, this ha- by the way, like this isn't like me making shit up. This happens all the time that the guy's like, okay, so I make my wife come. Then I'm so excited that, um, I come, you know, <laughs> like, uh, no shit. Like that's the way you're supposed to work biologically. The woman's having an orgasm. You're having an orgasm and a baby's made like, you know, you're not making
making a baby, you're on birth control, unless, you know, some, some set, subset of you are, but most of you aren't. So, you know, this is a good situation, you know, and if she wants you to last longer, then, and you want to last longer, then you can practice methods by which you could do that. But what one thing not to do is to complain and say, why is this not like the video montage of porn clips that I do when I'm on my own? And that's why I have my whole episode on why masturbation is not good within marriage if you don't have an ideal sex life. Because it's the same as if she was watching videos of a woman out on a date with a man and the man is saying, doing a quick change of compliments and he has them all at his disposal. Oh my God, you're the best wife and mother that I ever saw. Quick change. Oh, you're such a beauty. Look at you. Those eyes, those lips. Quick change. And the intelligence on you. My God. Something like Marie Curie crossed with Christy Brinkley. Like, give me a break. Like, this isn't real. But if she was watching videos of men that were able to do this on the regular, man, would she be disappointed in you? Much similar to how you're disappointed in her for not doing the quick change porn montage that you have um, in your mind as, as something that is possible, which is not really for the majority of women. Although, certainly, many women like to experiment and they may like to do more than one position, especially once they've come already or when they're very excited. But they aren't going to be able to do it straight from go. And they, after about a couple position changes, they're going to lose a little bit of steam unless it's the honeymoon stage, in which case, you know, you could bring a, a an octopus into the room and they would be turned on because they're so turned on just by default of being in the new love passionate stage. All right. Hopefully this was helpful for all y'all and um, I will talk to you soon.